Hey guys, before the video begins, I would like to make a very important announcement in regards to a new channel made by a friend of mine, Kelly Productions. He has created a new channel named The Watch. It's a channel dedicated to making superhero films and miniseries of a new universe that has been created and named The Watch. And the first film is out right now. If you follow me on Twitter, Instagram, or even on this very channel, you know I've spoken about a film that's been involved that I've been involved with. Well, this is it. The Midnight Warden. I'd highly appreciate it if you guys subscribed to this channel, liked the video, turned on notifications, and shared this film with your friends so we can make more films in the future. The more awareness of our films, the more we can make. You can find a link to the channel in the description below of this video, or click on my channel and go to the section channels, and it will be there as we speak. And with that being said, guys, I hope you enjoy today's video. What is going on, buddy? My name is Zell Prince, and welcome back to yet another reaction video. Now, this is the last reaction video that I am recording for this day. So you won't see me in the next in this clothing again in the next few videos to record because I have more lined up. I just can't record all of them tonight, at least when I'm recording this. Um, we got another SCP video by Dr. Bob. SCP-867 Blood Spruce. Don't know what it means. It has something to do with blue up blood and possibly a tree, but no idea because I don't think I've ever seen this before. This is another very old video, even older than the last one. It came out in August of last year and it's June. So I definitely have never seen this video before or recorded it for that matter. So that being said, guys, we are going to be reacting to this in three, two, one, go. What was that? The man and woman's go. hike through a gently rolling portion of the Rocky Mountains has just taken a turn for the dangerous. There's something there in the bush, the man tells her before <sighs> stepping in front of her in a defensive pose. They watch the bush intently. There's a slight rustling of the leaves as if something is inside. The man picks up a stick from the ground and holds it in there front she is. of him. I told, you. I told you she'd come back. I told you. <laughs> I left the door slightly open so she can come right back. She's gonna... Where are you going? What? What? You want my attention? All right. Come here. Come here. Come here. Ah! Something like Or jump on the table. Either one. You know what? Go on the table. <laughs> I told you she'd be back in the last video. I told you. At the end of it. Right? She has a box in the background that I came from first. She loves lying in it every now and then. What? What? You want? I'll give you cuddles after I'm done re recording, all right? Here. Here. I'll give you cuddles after this recording. This is the last video I am recording tonight, okay? Don't get? I don't know why I always put these like weird voices together. If anybody wants a voice actor, let me know. <laughs> I am available. <laughs> Need to strike whatever fearsome beast is lurking in the underbrush. The rustling stops, but the man doesn't move from his protective stance. Do you think it's gone? The woman asks. I don't think it's gone. The man is sure. He leans in towards the bush, searching for signs of what might be hiding inside when. Ah! The man screams and falls backwards as the creature oh. emerges from the bush. Aw, the woman cries. It's a pika. She oh, kneels what? down to get a closer look at the adorable little creature. Pikas are native to this part of Colorado, and they resemble oh. rabbits but with small, rounded ears. She watches it hop back off the trail before turning around to see her friend lying tangled in the branches of a tree. She can't help but laugh as she offers a hand to help pull him out of his predicament. Are you all right? She asks between fits of laughter. Yes, he's fine. The only thing hurt was his pride. He notices a small red spot on his arm and rubs it, but it doesn't seem to hurt at all. His attention is diverted by the woman, though, who is mm. marveling at the tree he was just stuck in. Free of the branches, he can appreciate now that the tree really is incredible. It looked like a huge blue spruce, but the name is a complete misnomer, because this tree is a vibrant red color. I've never seen anything like it, she says, and the man hasn't either. Neither mm. knows what species it is, and, strangely, 
there don't seem to be any others like it. Maybe this is the result of an odd genetic defect that turns blue spruces red. After admiring the tree for a moment, the pair decides that they've hiked far enough and that they should probably head back to the car. She jokes that he's likely exhausted from his run-in with a wild animal, and he laughs, but clearly his ego has been bruised. Oh. The man stops his car in front of the woman's house, and she thanks him for taking her on the hike. Oh, I, I see what's going to happen now. She starts to get out, though. He stops her. He asks if she wants to go do something else, like dinner? The woman thanks him for his offer, but she has to be up early the next day for work. Just a quick drink then? An hour? 30 minutes? The woman tries her best to let her friend down easy, explaining that she likes him as a friend and as only that. The man opens his mouth to respond, but she stops him. If he valued their friendship, then he wouldn't try to take advantage of it by using it as a backdoor to dating her. The man again looks like his pride has been shattered. He apologizes and admits that she is right. It's just that he has such a good time with her that he never wants it to end. She gives him a sad smile as she closes the car door and he watches her enter her house before he finally drives away. I know what's gonna happen to him. He's gonna, he's gonna branch out like an actual tree. Luna is sitting on my lap right now. I can back up. She loves it when I wear jeans. She just loves it. I'm coming back over to the react. I'm trying to move quietly because I think my dad is sleeping underneath. It's two weeks later when the man's phone rings. It's his friend. She explains that she's been thinking a lot about what he said in the car and that she likes spending time with him too. Maybe there could be something more to their relationship. The man can't believe it. Is this really happening? The woman is serious. She'd like to take him up on that dinner offer if he's still interested. Her treat. She wants to know what he is doing right- Ah! The man suddenly yelps in pain. Is he okay? What was that sound? Yes, I'm fine. It was nothing, the man tells her. It's just that now... now's not a good time. The woman doesn't understand. She thought he'd want to see her. She explains that she's leaving town for a work trip the next day and will be gone for a couple of weeks. She was hoping she could see him before she left, but... The man cries out in pain again. He yeah, tells her that he happening. hasn't been feeling well all day, but that he'll be all right. Okay, well, get well soon. I'll call you when I get back. They exchange goodbyes, and the man hangs up the phone. The man looks terrible. His skin is pale, and his face looks hollow and gaunt. He looks down at his arm and sees that the veins themselves appear to be moving, pulsing, and vibrating. He screams again in agony and falls to the floor, clutching his arm. After writhing on the floor, he manages to summon the strength to reach for the phone. His hand searches on the table above him, Not and eventually for the he's wire, able to knock it onto the floor. He grabs the phone and starts to dial. Nine, one, before he can press one again, another wave of intense searing pain consumes him. Several weeks later, the woman is standing outside the man's house. Mail and newspapers are piled up on his front porch, as if no one has been in or out in some time. She knocks on the door, but there's no response. Hello? She calls out. <laughs> Luna, stop. But still, nothing. She's trying to go for my headphone wires. She's very worried. She's tried calling him several times, but he never answered or returned her messages. She tries the doorknob, and to her surprise, the front door swings open. She steps inside, and the room He's is a tree dark. Now. She's also immediately hit by a strong aroma of… pine? She searches on the wall and finds the switch. She turns on the lights, and can't believe what she sees standing in front of her. There in the middle of the room is a massive spruce tree, its upper branches pressing against the ceiling. She reaches out and touches the tree's Don't vivid touch red branches. They feel sticky and wet. She pulls her hand away uh -oh, and looks she's down to see now. that it's covered in a red substance. That's when she notices something else. Stuck among the trunk at the base of the tree is the half-consumed body of her friend. Unfortunately, this pair would never have the opportunity to see their feelings take root and grow, because unbeknownst to them, this beautiful tree is actually a very deadly anomaly known to the SCP Foundation as SCP-867, but which is perhaps better known by its very appropriate nickname, Blood Spruce. Hmm. SCP-867 is, or at least appears to be, quite similar to the species of tree Piscea pungens, better known hmm. as the Blue Spruce. 
Of course, there are a number of dramatic differences between 867 and its non-anomalous counterpart. Visually, and most obvious, is the coloration. While blue spruces, as the name implies, are typically a blue-green color, SCP-867 is a deep, vibrant red. There's another major visual difference too, with the blood spruce lacking any sort of seed cones that you would normally expect to find. With no pine cones to protect and spread seeds, you'd be right to ask how SCP-867 goes about reproducing. The answer to that question is what makes this beautiful tree such a dangerous anomaly. Mm. The secret to how SCP-867 reproduces is found in its leaves. While they look like pine needles, SCP-867's leaves are, in fact, needles. Their structure is very similar to that of hypodermic needles, and each one contains a single long thin seed which oh. sits above a small gas pocket at the base. When oh. a living creature touches the leaves, the tree immediately reacts. It triggers the gas pocket in the base of the leaf to release, which injects the seed into the skin of whatever touched it. The process is quite similar to that found in auto-injectors, like those used to quickly treat allergic reactions. The seed itself is extremely small and is coated in a liquid that has both anesthetic and coagulant properties, which mm. makes the process virtually undetectable. Stop it, Luna. Once implanted in the skin, these seeds can lay dormant for up to two weeks before they begin the germination process and the true horror of SCP-867 is revealed. Once the seeds begin to sprout and grow, they will not seek to penetrate through the skin like a plant rising out of the soil. Instead, the strange plant will grow within its host's body, spreading throughout the circulatory system. This process is extremely painful for the host. The plant's tendrils wind through their veins and capillary system, Ooh. stretching and pressing against them as the blood spruce grows within them. Eventually, Ooh. the ever-increasing size of the plant's tendrils becomes too much, and the veins will begin Ooh. to rupture. I don't like that. This leads to severe internal bleeding, and soon after, the death of the host. The entire process is quite quick, with it only taking 24 hours from when the seeds first sprout to the host dying. But that single day will feel like an eternity to the afflicted individual as they feel the plant rapidly growing inside of their body. But even though the host has expired, this parasitoid tree is far from finished with them, or at least their body. Soon after death, a new instance of the blood spruce will burst from the body. The red tree is quite small at first, but it will continue to quickly grow, just as it did within its host's body, and can reach maturity in just 30 days. Wow. And unlike most other plants, SCP-867 is able to grow regardless of light or soil conditions, because it does not produce food via photosynthesis. No, this plant is carnivorous. As it grows, the 867 will slowly consume its host's body until nothing remains except the blood-red tree. Instances of SCP-867 were first identified in Colorado during the 1990s, following reports of numerous disappearances of hikers and park rangers. The SCP Foundation dispatched a team to the area to investigate, and they soon discovered numerous instances of the previously unidentified tree. Several still young specimens were acquired, though unfortunately, this led to the deaths of several agents, who were not yet aware of just how dangerous the red spruces could be. Once their threat level was properly assessed, Several specimens were flagged for containment and research purposes, while all of the other identified instances still in the wild were destroyed. Were they destroyed? The remaining instances of SCP-867 were classified as Euclid and are now securely kept at a I mean, foundation. It's not like it's entirely hard to contain. You just can't make physical flesh contact with it. Nation biocontainment site. Direct human contact with the plants is normally not allowed, and remote rovers are used for the majority of tests and upkeep. If for any reason it is necessary for a human to enter 867's Probably. containment cell, they are to wear full hazmat suits with a Kevlar underlayer, and upon exiting the cell, must undergo a full herbicidal treatment and inspection. Should any possible puncture marks be discovered, they will be forced to quarantine for no less than 15 days. Ah, nature. It's so beautiful, peaceful, and calming yet seems determined to try and kill us in any number of ways. If you're out hiking or camping in the woods, try to remember this extremely famous adage which I may or may not have just made up. It goes, leaves of three, let them be. Needles of red, well, you're probably already dead. Hmm. Now go and watch another entry from I the like files that. of Dr. Bob, <laughs> like SCP-021, the skin worm for another deadly anomaly with parasitic tendencies. A chainsaw. And make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss a single anomaly as we delve further and further into the SCP Foundation's classified archives. <laughs> All right.
<laughs> that was that was a good video. It's been a while since I started re since I started watching stuff by Doctor Bob. I gotta get back into SCP videos again, guys. I will. And Luna is yes, indeed, still sitting on my lap. You could probably see her tail wailing back and forth. I don't know why she just loves it when I wear jeans. This whole time she's been sleeping. And there she goes. She's probably off to her box. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's reaction video. This is the last one I'm recording, at least for the day of of this recording, because I have two other videos currently in my playlist to react to, but they are quite long, so I have not will not be getting to reacting to them at least today. I'm record I recorded all the, the past three videos. Um, I'm probably gonna add more videos to the list at the same time, so look forward to that, please. And I will see you in literally the next two videos to record and possibly more after that. Bye.